your name is, if your name is Zinkle or Butle or whatever it may be, put your name in there. Oh, Israel, it was I who formed you. So do not be afraid. In other words, be brave. In other words, be courageous. Do not be afraid, for I have ransomed you. Your salvation is not by chance. It was written in God's book long before it came into being. Okay? So it was God who started this work in you. You may have made a decision and say, Okay, Lord, I surrender to Jesus Christ. But it's God who started this work in you. And he's going to finish that work. And whatever God does is well. And it's not like our well. You know, when we say well, we have some degree of... But when God does things... It's supernaturally well, if I can put it that way. Okay? So he calls you by name. In other words, your identity. Please do not become a copy of Henry Inquest or David Guest or anybody else. Be authentically you. Be true to who God made you to be. Okay? It's the one challenge that God has, has challenged me with frequently throughout my life. And he still does. Because we so easily want to... Adopt another identity. No, he calls you by name. I mean, how many? For, ah, I mean, this is another one. This is another sermon. I hated my name for most of my life. Until God says, no. I've given you your name. Your name is Henry. Even though you think it's a phony name. That's my name for you. Amen. And Henry means Heinrich. He who rules the household. And you will be a ruler in my household. What a name. I am part ruler with Christ Jesus over a household of faith. Over his kingdom. Rake. Part of his kingdom. Ruler in his kingdom. What an amazing name I have. Now I love it. So your name is important. Whatever your name may be. Okay, so here we go. You will go. And now, 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 now comes the most exciting part because this is something that you can relate to. He says, when you go through the deep waters, and I don't know how deep the waters is that some of you have gone through. When you go through deep waters, I will be with you. Oh man, that is something that we had to learn. That we went through some deep waters when we went to Sweden. It's one thing, I can tell you this, it's one thing to have this lofty idea that you're going to go as a missionary. And I think Monica can tell you some of the stories of her family. When they came to South Africa, her father almost died. You know, on his way, just on his way to South Africa. Monica's life story and their life story has inspired me to say, press on, press in, don't give up. So my lofty idea, what missions was all about, was instantaneously burst. And I had to realize, God has to make me brave. Because it's going to take courage to stand here. It's going to take courage for me and my family. Now I want to say this, and then let's just pause here quickly. It's not me that, are, is, that is brave. Timothy had to be brave because he had to say goodbye to his parents. Timothy had to be brave because he could no longer knock on mom and dad's door for money. He had to trust God in a whole new way. Misha had to be brave because suddenly she sat in class, didn't understand a word anybody was saying, and yet she is learning. And she literally had to come home and be brave. For th after she travels three hours every day, she had to come translate everything into English in order to understand, hope and plead with God so we get some understanding. And Misha has this thing, she doesn't want to fail. She has set herself some standards, and suddenly she could no longer meet the standards. And it, she had to be brave and cry many times, but press in. When you go through the waters, press in. Or learn to float. Okay? <laughs> One of those things. Okay? But something has to happen. Mfundo. You know it, it's one thing living with a family that has not taken you in. It's one thing to say goodbye to your sister that you just got to know. Fundo is not one to talk, but the books are coming. You know, he's going to write some books. Okay? I'm prophetically saying that. Because there's some stories that he has in his heart that he's sharing with people in his life group. 
And he is transforming his life group. Because that man is a preacher. You have no idea how much he preaches. He has shared with us a couple of times, I'm amazed at what God has done in his life. I am amazed at the privilege that Lynette and I have to be his parents. But Fundo had to learn to press in. But for some reason, God has given that young man courage. God has given him courage. I want to say to you, to be able to literally take on a whole new culture and make it your own, even though you're a stranger. I mean, at least I can blend in, you know? I, at least I can maybe look somewhat like either a German or like maybe a Norwegian or whatever. But, I mean, Fundo doesn't blend, you know? How do you blend that? Are you, are you with me? So, so, I mean, that takes some other form of courage, man. That takes some other form of bravery. Brave. Okay, brave. I mean, how, how do you, how do you, how do you find yourself being loved by Muslims galore? And they know you're Christian and you're African. And they love him to bits. And Fundo brings life where he goes. That's bravery there. To literally you know, walk in there and just being himself. I'm talking about my family. You know why I'm talking about that? Because it's not me. God has done something for my family and I. Lynette, I mean, you know, to, 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 as a mother, to have to try and pull the things together. Your husband is at work. He can focus on some other things. And you, as a woman, have to remain resolute, trusting God. She's phoning. She's running around. She has to literally, I think I have to myself sit down and ask, what gift has God given me in Lynette? And I have no idea the fullness. I'm glad that God's given me evidence of this type of woman that he's given me. I have to sometimes tell her what I see God has given her. Because she's so caught up with just doing life. She's just caught up to try and make things happen. And, and run around and connect dots and stuff. And She... Spouse bravery for me. She spouse bravery for me. Because when you lose your job four times, I think that's four. Okay, four times. And you, and you fight with a migration. And you don't know why they're just resistant and they don't want to give us work permits. And you're not sure whether we're going to have an income next month or not. And you're not sure how long we're going to be in this country. And you're not sure whether your children's education is again going to be kind of called to, to naught or to zero. It takes a tremendous amount of courage to be brave and to say, God. And you know what? It's possible that Lynette and I can be in each other's hair and, and stress the living daylights out of each other. But God, when you, when you pour it through the waters, float, man. Because God's going to make you float. God's going to make you float. Just listen to what he says. When you go through the rivers of difficulty, my, my Bible says rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. You're going to get water in your face. You, you with me? You're going to feel it. It's going to be there. It's going to be some turbulence. It's going to be some turbulence. And there's a reason why there's turbulence. And we've discovered why there's turbulence. Because bravery requires some difficult situations. Faith requires that there's some measure of resistance. Don't think that you're going to build faith muscle. I, I don't know if that's big ones. Fundus is bigger than me. Josh is bigger than mine. I've got a little bit. But if you're going to be working on your faith muscle, you're going to need some resistance. You're going to need some situations where God has to show up. Let me tell you this. No, faith is a supernatural word. Faith is a word that originates in heaven. You, you guys are not so sure about that. I'm nearing my 6.5 minutes. I'm almost there with the 7 minutes. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm almost there. I'm finished. I'm, I'm gonna. You and I need to understand that faith comes from heaven. Because three things remain, faith, hope, and love. Those are eternal 
little things, man. And you got it inside of you. You and I got it inside of you. God gave it to you. You got, you got faith that can move mountains, man. I tell you what, my, my family's faith move mountains. Let, let, let me finish with Josh quickly. I, you know, my boy is like me. We are dyslexic. And dyslexic is, is not when you know when you lack the potter it and they lack to buy it as a dyslexic. <laughs> no, it's not that. That means you struggle when you see a book. The words look like this, like little letters swimming in a pot of soup. And you have to somehow get your brain to get them to organize themselves so that it looks like words. I mean, it's crazy that I'm a teacher because how do I teach when I'm dyslexic, you know? <laughs> when, when, when you, but I've learned to master English and I've mastered Afrikaans and I have to whew, work on my Swedish. You can't speak Swedish, you understand me. You can't understand it all. But you can. You want to learn to speak Swedish. And you scratch on me when you speak Swedish with them. They laugh at me when I try and speak Swedish. Dad, please. You hurt yourself. <laughs> but that's the point. You know, when you, when you have a, a son that has already struggled in South Africa with his education and, you, and, and he gets into a new language in a new situation and it's almost as if it threatens the life out of you, your son has to be brave and he has to be courageous. And the only thing you have to say to him is trust God, he's going to help you. And, and when Josh is scared to do his homework because he doesn't understand things, and, and, and you have a father that wants to kind of help him to understand in a, in a, in a way that's not very creative. Because <laughs> I'm just stressing myself. It costs bravery. Bravery to form new friends when only thing that you have is long for your friends that you miss in Margate. From very familiar faces that you cannot see as often as you would want them to. My family is, they my team. They my team. What an amazing team I have. What an amazing team I have. My family has given me courage to walk this tightrope and know that Jesus is not going to drop us. We have become a testimony in Sweden. Not me. Not me. I feel sometimes I'm the one weak link in the family. But God somehow would use weak people like I. And weak people may be like some of you. Not all of you, but just maybe some of you. And I better end now because I think now 14, it's become 14 minutes. <laughs> oh, God help me. Yeah, I go. I, so I'm finishing off. But I'm going to say this to you. I'm going to just read this. When you walk through the fire of oppression. Oh man, fire. We sang about fire this morning. James says, do not be surprised at the fiery trials that you're facing. It's your faith that is being tested. And your faith is far more genuine than pure gold. Some of us have got off cuts. We're wearing it around our necks and some of it is on our, but it looks more like off cuts because that's, that gold doesn't compare to, to the real stuff. But your faith is far more genuine than that. Your faith is far more genuine than that. And I, I don't know what Maria is going through that, that we were praying for this morning. And I don't know why. But guess what? You know what? Romans chapter 8 says this. That we're going to suffer for a little while. We're going to suffer and we're going to have to endure for a little while. But it cannot compare to the glory that awaits us. And it's very interesting, Romans 8, 17 says that, yes, you are now called sons of God. Yes, you are now part of God's household. And that's who you are. You've got this amazing identity as a child of God. And you share not only that, but you share in the inheritance of Christ Jesus. And I have no idea what it looks like. But there he says this, 
But if we're going to share in the glory of Christ, then we have to share in the sufferings of Christ as well. And I'm telling you this, some of us, and many of us in this room, and many of us at the body of Jesus Christ, is experiencing some of the sufferings of Christ. Because we have to go through some pain. Because you know why? You're going to have to look like Jesus. And I don't understand that process, but I know that God is making you to look like Jesus. And so the fire is going to come. This fire is going to be there. The fire is going to be there. The fire is going to be there. But know this, you're going to be a fire walker. Amen. You're a fire walker because God is making you brave. So you're not going to stand. You, you, you are exactly like Sadrach, Mesach, and Abednego, or Michael, Azariah, and Hananiah. That's their real names. You are a fire walker. You're a fire walker. God is making this church brave. God is making me brave. This church is a liberator of people. I am so glad for this church. And I'm so glad that we get to be part of this church. But I'm asking you, right now God is pouring out His Spirit like never before. And the people are getting saved and He wants to do miracles. But He needs people that wants to be brave and says, I'm going to believe you that you're going to use me. I'm going to believe you that you're going to be brave. I thought I was crazy to believe God that I can touch nations. And I've been praying for, for many nations. I can comfortably say that I have been praying for a hundred nations of the world over my period of salvation. And many people say you will never be able to go there. All. You're crazy. Until I got to Stockholm and I got 110 nations. <laughs> 110 nations in Stockholm alone. And suddenly God says, what other people said was possible, I'm making possible. And I'm a witness to all of them. I can be a witness. Because when we stand on, on, on Uden Plan and we're speaking the gospel and sharing the gospel, potentially there's 110 different nations that can see that I'm brave for Jesus. I'm asking you, will you be brave with me? I'm asking, forget about what you see in front of you, man. Let's not be short-sighted. I'm asking you to drop, drop the way you look at things and lift your gaze up. I know what it is to stand there and say, I lift up my eyes to the hills. I've actually decided, Psalmist, I think you're wrong. It's not I lift up my eyes to the hills. I lift my eyes to the heavens because I know where my help comes from. So it's no longer so to the hills. It's way, I'm way, way beyond my hills, way beyond my mountains, way beyond my challenge. My family and I, we trust in God. We're going to go back to Sweden. Because you know why? God says so. And right now, it looks absolutely impossible. But you know why? Because my faith has grown into bravery, into courage. It's no longer than that. We now have faith that endures. We've got an endurance I'm going to go back to Sweden, and I'm going to go there soon. I can't tell you the month that I'm going to go, but this year I'm going to be in Sweden still. I'm going to be back in Stockholm because there's a house waiting for me. And the way God has provided that that house is kept, I mean, I mean South Africa has got no income, and God is providing for my family every single month. That's the type of God that makes things happen. Let's be brave. I'm asking you, what are you believing God for? I better stop because you know, David knows I can go, I can preach for a month here. Yeah? <laughs> so let me pray with you. I'm, I'm, I, don't want us, I, I want us to stand. You know why I'm standing? Because I don't want you to stand because I'm requesting you. I'm standing you because you're standing on the promises of a God that cannot fail. Amen. You're standing on a God that says, I'm making you brave because I've put faith in you that is powerful, that is supernatural. A, a faith, and I want you to know that if you have a testimony of pain, and that's exactly what you need. Because, and I'll quickly just mention this if I'm going to minister to the Iraqis, if I'm going to minister to the Iranians, if I'm going to minister to those from Afghanistan and from those who sit here who loses their jobs and has to fight with migration and not sure where the income is going to come from, then I'm going to have to experience that. And say, my God can and my God does. And when my God comes and says, I want to follow your God. Because my God, Allah, doesn't do it. 
And my God, Buddha doesn't do it. And my God, Krishna doesn't do it. But your God seems to do things. You seem to be like a blue-eyed boy in heaven. Because my, my name is written on his heart. Your name is written on his heart. Let's pray. Father, it's our joy to humble ourselves before you. Because we see that you're an amazing champion. You do things that no one can do. You are our God. You called us by name. You washed us in your blood. You exalted us to be seated with Christ in heavenly places. That's where we are. We're not insignificant. We are so significant. I thank you, Lord, that you're giving us bravery. Bravery to do supernatural things. To walk in places and stand in situations where everything else is shaking around us and we stand secure. I pray for this church, its ministry, the people that they're going to send out, the places they're going to reach, the furthest corners of the globe where Freedom Gate is going to change and transform lives. I pray for strength upon the leaders of this household. I pray for the provision for those who have to press in and trust you. I pray for strength upon moms and dads who have to believe for their children, for their salvation, and they walk before you, and they will stand, they will come. I pray for miracles, Lord, that we haven't seen yet. It's going to happen, Lord, because that's who you are. A God that does abundantly above, far more than we can ask or think or imagine in Christ Jesus. Amen. I'll be back. Um, I just felt like God is also reminding us as we listened to what Henry was saying this morning and, and seeing the photos and the slideshow of what, what the Rinkwist family has been doing. God's reminding us, some of us sitting here today have forgotten the prophetic words that have been spoken over our lives. And maybe you've got prophetic words, you've got um, giftings and callings and things that, that you felt called to at one point. I just, when, and Henry spoke about the hundred, hundred nations he's prayed for. And in Stockholm, he's been impacting people from 110 different nations. That's amazing. When you do what God has told you to do and you step out of faith and you be brave, God, God makes the impossible possible. And God has called every single one of us in this room to something. And uh, in, in this last season that's just been designed to shut us all down, um, God wants to stir up giftings again, stir up callings again, prophetic words. Some of, some of us have got to go and take that prophetic word book or whatever it is that you've got. Some, maybe it's a bit of a scrap of paper in the back of a Bible somewhere up on a shelf somewhere or in a book. And get it out, dust it out, and start doing some, start doing some prayer over those things. Yeah. Fighting the good fight of faith. Fighting over those prophetic words. Because God's not done. He hasn't changed his mind. God didn't change his mind. He, he knows what he's doing. And he, needs to, he, he, he doesn't need to. He wants to use every single one of us. Every single one of us. And uh, any of us. And he's got so much he wants to do in and through us. So I want to just remind you of that, encourage you this week, get out those words. I've asked Henry just to stay here because um, I want, Henry has got a gift of evangelism. I mean, I always said to Henry when they used to live here that he could walk outside here and convert a tree. You know, get a tree to say yes to Jesus or a stone, you know. And uh, so I just wanted to pray for us one more time. Just pray for hearts in our lives that we will be people who speak and, and declare the gospel to those we meet. Um. I, I want to mention this. My son is struggling with, with, uh, with, he struggled with the language of English. He struggled with the language of, of, of Zulu while he was here. But guess what? When he comes home with merit awards because his German teacher is so impressed with him, my God, my God can let him conquer languages. <laughs> okay. You ask, I'm going to pray over you because you know what? Some of us are thinking, I cannot go out in the streets and share with somebody. But I can tell you this, you can have a cup of tea. And you can invite somebody over for dinner. Even if it is peanut butter and bread, man. You're sharing a meal with that person while you're there. While you're there, you're doing it. You're doing it. Right now, Father, we received this morning, and myself, Josh, Timothy, Mishay, Fundo, Christian, Lynette, and myself, we receive a fresh touch from heaven. 
on every single person in this building, even those that are listening online, and even those who will listen online by watching this video, we receive a fresh touch from heaven as we get Holy Spirit to move our hearts for the lost. And Lord, I thank you that you're going to give us creative ways in which we can share the gospel with people and bring the family that are lost home, back home, back to you in Jesus' name. And so, Lord, we, we receive ability, we receive creativity, we receive miracles, we receive wonders, we receive words of knowledge, we receive things that, that we didn't even expect, oh God, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Lord, we cast out fear and any form that would inhibit us. And whatever resistance there may be, I thank you, Lord, that you give us the strength to endure whatever resistance it may be. In Jesus' name, hallelujah. And right now, we prepare this place. We make room for the lost that will come in Jesus' name. From every nation, tribe, and tongue. We pray for the, for the Chinese in this town. We pray for the Pakistanis in this town. And I pray for the Somalians. I don't even know who else is in this town, Lord. We bring them in today in Jesus' name. We open up, Lord. This will be an international church in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And we thank you for that, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Awesome, awesome, awesome. What a great morning. We're going we're gonna to take up the tithes and offerings, but I, I've left it to the end on purpose because I want us to sow into Henry and Lynette and the family's life as well this morning. Um, they're good soil to invest in. Would you agree with that? Good soil to invest in. So we're going to just ask the guys to come. There are envelopes at the back. So if you want to give something specifically to them this morning, go and grab an envelope and uh, put something in there. Otherwise, you can just do an EFT and just say there, um, Henry and Lynette or Ringquest family or something, just so that we know uh, to earmark it for them. Um, but let's invest in their lives. Amen? When we're investing into their lives, we're investing into 110 nations. How's that for a thought? That is a, that's incredible. So we're going to do that and... Uh, the boxes are coming around. Um, oh, I'm also being reminded about the new, the, the new people. Are they, the visitors that are in the building today, any visitors here today for the first time? No, so today was about remembering to bring your visitors next week. Bring them all to church. Awesome. But so great to have you all. And so the boxes, are they, are they heading? There we go. Okay, fantastic. So they're going to come around, and uh, we can put some music on. I'm not going to speak again. We're going to, the, the service is over, and uh, go and enjoy a good cup of coffee and a great afternoon. Get to know the ring if you haven't got to know them yet, and we will yeah, come take a picture of the T-shirt. There we go. Fantastic. Great to see you all. So, so good to be together again. I'm stirred up. I hope you've stirred up. Um, God is doing something really, really cool. Awesome. So if you need an envelope, the envelope's at the back. Otherwise, you can just do an EFT as well. And the bas baskets are heading around. Um, music is playing. Coffee's happening. Let's go for it. Have a great afternoon.